Number 10, Mariah Carey. This celebrity feud is legendary, so it's only fair that we start off with this one. JLo and Mariah Carey have been at each other's throats since the early 2000s. In fact, most people remember the iconic line that Mariah told a German reporter, I don't know her. Although it sounds hilarious, Mariah has maintained her negative opinion of JLo all these years. For example, an interviewer once asked her what she thought about Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez and she responded by saying that they don't even belong in the same category for a very specific reason. Well, it's hard. You can't really put those two people in the same category because one is in a really different generation. They just started singing later. But when you talk about Beyonce, I think she's wonderful. She's great. She's a talented person. But it seemed that she forgot to compliment JLo as well. A few years later, Carrie spoke to Andy Cohen and doubled down on her comments. Quote, I don't know her. What am I supposed to say? It looks like it'll take a miracle for these two iconic performers to ever be on good terms. Number 9, Rihanna. There are several celebrities who can't stand Jennifer Lopez, but one of the biggest critics of the iconic singer is Rihanna. These two former best friends had a serious falling out in 2016 for the oldest reason in the book. They were fighting over the same guy. Before the feud began, Rihanna and JLo were friendly to each other and had no reason for animosity. But trouble started brewing right after Rihanna and Drake broke up. They had had a summer fling that same year which was pretty casual but it definitely still counted. Girl code was broken when JLo started getting close with Drake almost immediately after. But the feud really became public when Jennifer posted a photo of her and Drake hanging out backstage at her show in Las Vegas with the caption hashtag love him. In fact, the two were even spotted hugging and fans quickly realized that something very shady was happening. An inside source close to the star said that Riri felt like she had suffered the ultimate betrayal and called Jennifer's behavior desperate. It must have been accurate because in December of 2016, she suddenly unfollowed Lopez on Instagram. Number 8, Gloria Estefan. Cuban American superstar Gloria Estefan was originally supposed to be performing at the 2020 Super Bowl alongside fellow Latina pop stars JLo and Shakira. But after seeing JLo's new documentary called Halftime, where the singer went on a rant about having to share the stage with Shakira, Gloria put her comments on blast. She didn't seem to agree that it was the worst idea ever to have the artist share the stage and explained why Lopez got it wrong on what what happens live with Andy Cohen. Quote, look, this is the bottom line. You have very little time, like 12 minutes or something, to get things on and off the set. So could you do it with one person? Yes. But I think they wanted to throw a Miami and Latin extravaganza and they tried to pack it in as much as possible. The Grammy Award winner also confirmed that she chose not to participate for a reason, seeing as JLo got so worked up about having two people perform. Quote, okay, and imagine what JLo would have said if I was the third. I literally would come out, Donna, shake your booty and out. But she went on to insist that it was their moment and that she didn't want to go on a diet in December anyway. Number seven, Nick Cannon. The Wild and Out star took a cue from his ex-wife Mariah Carey's famous phrase to throw shade at Jennifer Lopez during his guest appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. While discussing Hollywood crushes during the Hot Topic segment, the 41-year-old first named Carey, his ex-wife and mother to their two twins, Moroccan and Monroe. Quote, number one, Mariah, the amazing mother, superstar, singer. He then went on to name Halle Berry and Naomi Campbell as his second and third choices. A producer then suggested JLo as an option and he just responded with, I don't know her. After the audience erupted into laughter, the host added, that was a joke for the lambs. Shout out to the lambs. As Kerry refers to her fans as the lamely. Cannon made it clear who he supports in the ongoing Battle of the Divas and naturally Naturally, he sided with Carrie, so we can't really fault him for that. It's been a bit of a running joke for years that Mariah wasn't kidding and didn't actually know JLo personally when she gave that interview. But it was too late to clear the air as the classic I don't know her line has gone down in history as one of the best ways to shade someone. Number 6, Rosie Perez. Both Jennifer Lopez and Rosie Perez have served as inspirations to the Latin community for over two decades, but they haven't always gotten along. They met back in 1991 during an open casting call for In Living Color. At the time, Perez was the show's choreographer, and Lopez was auditioning to become a member of the dance troupe known as the Fly Girls. 
Her, her audition was unsuccessful, but Perez saw a star quality in JLo and actually pulled some strings to get her in. But after she was in the group, it became clear that Lopez didn't get along with her fellow dancers. According to Perez, she was labeled as a diva right away. All of the girls were coming into my office and complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. Perez said that at first she didn't believe it, but then JLo screamed at her saying, I know I'm good, I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. What's worse is, after JLo left the show and made it big in the music industry, she went on talk shows trashing her former choreographer. Perez also implied that JLo ghosted her. Quote, I called her up, she wouldn't pick up. Frustrated, I left her an irate message on her answering machine. Instead of calling me back and hashing it out like friends do, she went on a major talk show and reiterated my lashing. Madonna. Superstar Madonna has been in the game since the 80s and established plenty of enduring relationships with other entertainers who've come before and after her. But that doesn't mean she hasn't had her moments where she's thrown someone the cold shoulder. In this case, Jennifer Lopez definitely deserved it because she dissed Madonna's whole career in that infamous movie line interview in 1998. Lopez was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. It was then that she decided to boast about her own talent in comparison to Madonna. Quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. She also added, quote, acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Those comments were pretty bad considering that Madonna has been a star for a lot longer than JLo and at the time of the interview, there was almost no comparison between them. It seems like Madonna held on to those remarks for quite some time because in 2009, she went on David Letterman and implied that Lopez tries to copy her by studying her looks on stage. Gwyneth Paltrow. At the time, Lopez was still fresh off the success of Selena and Anaconda, and she was explaining how she felt she was grouped into what she called the bottom of the A-list actresses. Paltrow was a star on the rise at the time, with many films under her belt such as Seven, Great Expectations, and Shakespeare in Love, which earned her a Best Actress Oscar in 1999. When Lopez was asked about Paltrow, she almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously. Quote, tell me what she's been in? I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. If you have the goods, there's nothing to be afraid of. If somebody doesn't have the goods, they're insecure. I don't have that problem. Although Paltrow took the high road and never publicly criticized the star, when JLo started dating her ex-boyfriend Ben Affleck, she was reportedly very upset about the pairing and said that she didn't think Jennifer is right for him. It's easy to see why she felt that way. Scott Barnes. If you want to see just how long Lopez can hold a grudge, just ask celebrity makeup artist Scott Barnes, who's worked for her for the past 20 years. It's important to note that not all of JLo's feuds and shade throwing has been directed towards the rich and famous. The star essentially banished her longtime makeup artist Scott Barnes after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on The Jeff Probst Show in 2012, Barnes revealed that the woman he considered a friend cast him aside for an entire year until it was confirmed that someone else was responsible for the leak. Quote, it was like I had the plague. Interestingly enough, JLo did end up giving Barnes his old job back again after learning the truth, but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless which sounds exactly like something she would do. The celebrity makeup artist, who's also lent his talents to Hollywood stars, including Gwyneth Paltrow, added, quote, I went right back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. The funny thing is, Barnes would go on to work with her for another six years and insisted that they remained on good terms, despite the fact that she ghosted him. He wasn't even guilty of the leak, but she cut him out of her life for a whole year. Talk about insanity. Salma Hayek. In that same interview from 1998, Lopez did not enjoy being compared to Salma Hayek, 
quote, we're in two different realms. She's a sexy bombshell, and those are the kinds of roles that she does. I do all kinds of different things. And as if trashing her career wasn't enough, the supremely confident Lopez also claimed that Hayek had been telling a few lies about the fact that she had been offered the lead role of Selena, the 1997 film based on the life of slain Texas-born superstar Selena Quintanilla. She went on to say, quote, It makes me laugh when she says she got offered Selena, which is an outright lie. If that's what she does to get herself publicity, then that's her thing. The comments were incredible incredibly rude and ignorant of JLo even though she claimed they were taken out of context in an interview that she did a few years later. But in 2020, Selma Hayek opened up to Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, saying that in the 90s she was offered the role of Selena before Jennifer Lopez, but she turned it down. Quote, they offered it to me like a week after she died. It was a little distasteful. They were already planning on making this movie. So it goes to show you how gracious Selma Hayek is because she wanted to be respectful to Selena's passing. Number five, Brandy. Brandy has had a public feud with Jennifer Lopez since 2017. And according to Kiwi Report, she made it clear that she supports Mariah Carey going against JLo too. Basically, she posted a photo of herself on Instagram hugging Carey with the hashtag Hashtag, she knows me. The caption was super perfect and a great reference to that famous I don't know her comment. So the whole thing tells us that Brandy is totally teaming with Mariah. Brandy's post exploded on social media and Lopez fans immediately took offense to it. Mariah saw the backlash and chimed in to Brandy's photo, commenting with a simple I sure do. But the singer was quick to defend herself from hate comments and edited the caption shortly after posting it with quote, oh my god, what happened? I swear to goodness, I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny, can't take this one down. I love this picture and whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. She totally doubled down on dissing Jennifer and siding with Mariah, adding, quote, Also, I've met her several times. Like the several seats that should be taken, she does know me. Number four, Nicki Minaj. These two have allegedly been feuding since 2012. It all started when Nicki was performing one particular it all started when Nikki was performing on one particular episode of American Idol at the same time that JLo was sitting on the judge panel. In a rather awkward moment, Nikki asked if she could come back on the show as a guest judge and asked JLo to scoot over. As a Latina artist hit back, she said, I don't know if there's room for both of us. It was one of those joking moments that seemed like there was something else behind it, but nevertheless, the two seemed to be just joking around. Even though Nikki told a reporter backstage, Quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. Okay, so now we're jumping to 2015, when fans swear that Nicki shaded JLo for performing her song at the American Music Awards. As she was performing a small part of Anaconda, the camera cut to Nicki in the audience, looking less than happy with the rendition. The clip showed her emotionless face and made it seem like she didn't approve of the way her song was being used. Ashanti. While Jennifer Lopez has landed herself several platinum selling hits since her rise to fame with her debut album, she is no stranger to causing controversy regarding how she ends up getting her songs. While Ashanti has never openly admitted to sharing a feud with Jennifer Lopez, the R&B songstress has certainly hinted that she was often overlooked because of the success. Aside from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for her song Loverboy in the same year, Lopez was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti, which left Ashanti feeling irritated given that she had just landed her first taste of success in the music industry around that same time. Then in September of 2001, Lopez released I'm Real, lifted from her second studio album with Gotti, but he eventually handed the track over to Lopez even though the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you still hear her background vocals in Lopez's version. Ashanti said, quote, It felt bittersweet because I was really excited because it was with JLo, you know what I mean? But I was so mad at Irv because I was like, you know I wanted that record. The whole situation between the two stars always seems bizarre and unfair, and many people believe that JLo outright stole Ashanti's vocals and passed them off as her own. 
Usher. JLo and Usher had a pretty big feud in 2005 over alleged music theft. The star had been accused of stealing or borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years, and Usher had something to say about this. He claimed that his R&B rival stole a song that he cast aside while recording the hugely successful album Confessions. Usher said that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re-recorded version of Ride, a song that he co-wrote last year which was only available online. When asked about the whole ordeal, the then 26 year old said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better get some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. In fact, this whole situation was partly due to producer Rich Harrison, who co wrote the track with Usher and later decided to use it during recording sessions for JLo's upcoming album Rebirth, using the exact same vocal pattern. So JLo's song Get Right is actually a reworking of a beat Usher had created for his own album. When he scrapped his song Ride, parts of it made it into Jennifer's track and created one of the biggest dance floor hits ever. At least Usher was vocal about it and as a result chose not to work with JLo for several years following. Howard Stern. The controversial radio host Howard Stern is JLo's biggest critic and just doesn't understand her appeal. He said so himself on his super popular radio show. Not only isn't he a fan of her music, but Stern has publicly claimed that Jennifer's been rude to him on multiple occasions despite his friendship with people close to her, saying that he does not respect her stuck up attitude. One of the main reasons why Lopez will never go on the Howard Stern show is because he has attacked everything from her career choices to her appearance. Both were judges on America's Got Talent at the same time, and in a red carpet interview with HLN in 2012, he said that Jennifer Lopez was more interested in promoting her career than being a proper judge. Quote, it helped her career. She got very far. She suddenly got back on the charts and the show was good for her and it became more about JLo. In 2016, Howard compared JLo's music to that of a homeless woman who sang a nonsensical song and as a prank, Howard's staff took the song to pedestrians on the street and tried to pass it off as her latest hit. One of the harshest things he's ever said though was during an interview with JLo's ex P Diddy where he slammed her looks by claiming that Diddy got out at the right time due to her aging. Eva Mendes. There was a time where Eva Mendes and JLo comparisons were inevitable. Similar to Lopez, Eva's career began in the 90s. She started out featuring in music videos with stars like Will Smith, Aerosmith and Pet Shop Boys. They were both Latina actors making waves in the entertainment industry in the 2000s. They've both dated A-listers and starred in big budget blockbusters, delivering standout performances that stole the show. However, when these similarities were brought to Eva's attention, the actress was very offended at the idea and felt that it was insulting to be compared to Lopez at all. In fact, Eva even felt that her approach to acting was more serious than Lopez's in a major way and added that JLo manages her career like a business as opposed to caring about her art. Quote, I would like to think I will have a more serious career than JLo. We may be both of Latin origin, but that's where the comparisons stop. She manages her career like the head of a big corporation, whereas the only thing I care about is becoming the best actress possible. While Mendez has made it clear that she never respected JLo's career, at least her comments don't sound too personal and were probably made because she was just sick and tired of constantly being compared to the other Latina actress. Number three, Ryan Seacrest. This this incident gives Ryan every reason to hate JLo because it's pretty bad. Ryan Seacrest worked alongside the singer on American Idol and the two quickly became friends. But all that seemingly changed when the talk show host revealed that he flew down to Miami to celebrate her milestone 50th birthday, only to be denied entry at the door. Ouch. He recalled the whole story on Live with Kelly and Ryan and explained that he flew down from New York for only a few hours because he had to make it back in time for the next morning show. But when he finally arrived, the doorman told him, you're not on the list, to which he responded, clearly there's a mistake. She invited me personally. But upon being denied, he checked the list and couldn't find his name. The doorman just asked him to wait, made a quick call and was able to confirm that Seacrest was indeed on the guest list. But the host went on to say that he he was the first person there and no one really got turned up until after he left. It would have certainly been a little embarrassing to say in the least. Number two, Cameron Diaz. 
Throughout the years, Jennifer Lopez has been known to speak negatively about her fellow actors, and it looks like it may have come back to bite her. During an interview in the late 90s, JLo explained that Cameron Diaz was just a lucky model who was given opportunities. She did mention that Diaz can be good when directed, but Lopez's past comments about Cameron's career allegedly made things super awkward between them. When they were when they both had to buckle down and work together in the 2012 comedy, What to Expect When You're Expecting. Several anonymous sources on the set of the film claim that the two stars did not get along at all during the shoot. In fact, it was reported that Cameron said the singer was a nightmare to work with. Quote, she even said that Jen should stick to her day job, meeting American Idol and singing. According to the insider, JLo demanded to eat at specific times, no matter what, and stops working when it suits her. And she had her assistant run over to her with food. This is what allegedly drove Cameron crazy. Another source claimed that the co-stars actively avoided one another while filming and tensions were thick. Number 1. Ojani Noah The former couple were married on February 22, 1997 and got divorced barely one year later, in January of 1998. It was so long ago that you would think Ojani has moved on from the relationship, but apparently he's still holding on to a bit of resentment. In fact, Jennifer's former flame was out to make a buck off their brief marriage by trying to expose revealing videos from their honeymoon. Ajani was even hauled into court after he started planning a tell-all movie based on the revealing home footage called How I Married Jennifer Lopez, The JLo and Ojani Noah Story. The result? Well, she sued him for a whopping $10 million and demanded a permanent court order blocking her ex from making any videos public. Ajani also threatened to write a tell-all book unless he was paid $5 million by the singer. His unpublished book alleges that JLo had multiple affairs, including one with Mark Anthony, during the 11 months that they were married. But a judge was not having it and awarded her $545,000 in damages and quashed the book, ruling that it violated a 2004 deal not to publish details of their relationship. At number 10, we have Jennifer's dismissal of bad teacher actress Cameron Diaz when she made the comment that she believes Cameron is a quote, lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities. And how she wishes she would have done more with them. In turn, Cameron made a statement that Jennifer's behavior on set was rather cold as she pretty much ignored her. She also described Jennifer as being someone who was hard to work with. As a clapback, Cameron further pushed that JLo should stick to her day job of singing. However, in the same Jennifer interview, it wasn't just Cameron that she came for. She also took shots at fellow actresses Gwyneth Paltrow and Winona Ryder. For Gwyneth, Jennifer said, tell me what she's been in? I swear to god, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. On the Nona, Jennifer recalled, I was never a big fan of hers. In Hollywood, she's revered. She gets nominated for Oscars, but I've never heard anyone in the public or among my friends say, oh, I love her. At number nine, we have radio show host and interviewer Howard Stern, whose reasonings for not liking JLo comes in many forms. For one, he hates her music. Howard's typical musical vibe is 90s rock and grunge rather than early 2000s pop. But not only does Howard not enjoy Jennifer's music, he's also bashed it in the form of jokes on numerous occasions despite his attraction to fairly few pop songs in the past. In summary, it was Howard Stern's show co-host Robin who made claims while they watched her on the floor music video that radio stations were hesitant to play the song since she hadn't been charting for a while. Apparently to further this point, he described that the relevance of JLo being a judge on American Idol kind of forced the song down on consumers' throats, and Howard later accused Jennifer of being self-absorbed because the single debuted on American Idol. Howard further bashed her Super Bowl performance and even ridiculed Jimmy Fallon's praises for it as well. There was also the incident where Howard claims he spent the entirety of his run-in with his friend Mark Anthony, who was married to Jennifer at the time, being completely ignored. This further pushed the established reputation of Jennifer being a snotty diva. Howard's last straw was Jennifer's interview, where she was asked if she found Howard attractive and remained silent while expressing a puking expression. Since then, Howard has not let up on the insults about her attitude, music, and business choices whenever she's brought up on his show. At number 8, we have Gloria Estefan shade to Jennifer for her halftime documentary spiel about performing with Shakira for the 2020 Super Bowl. When Gloria admitted she chose not to participate with no regrets, she blasted Jennifer's comments about their experience when she sat down with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live in June. Quote, Imagine what JLo would have said if I was third. I literally would come out, done, shake your booty, and out. It was their moment. Plus, I didn't want to go on a diet in December. This was in light of JLo's reaction to Shakira co-headlining the sports event. Benny Medina said in the film that it was insulting
resulting of the Super Bowl to request two Latina artists when one had already historically done the work. Yet Jennifer was the one who was upset about splitting her time on stage, stating that they only had five minutes to sing all their desired songs accurately. Quote, We have to have our singing moments. This is the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. While Jennifer and Shakira communicated about their upcoming performance, Jennifer added, They said 12 minutes. I got a good confirmation that we could have an extra minute or two, so now we're at like 13, 14 minutes. I think Shakira, what we should have is you should have half the time and I should. If it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. At number 7 we have singer Brandy, who was apparently picking sides when the Lopez Carey feud was at its peak. Brandy had shared an Instagram photo of her embracing Mariah in 2017 with a short three word caption of hashtag she knows me. Brandy's followers were on her like water as soon as the post was uploaded, speculating that the caption had everything to do with Mariah's famously memed I don't know her. In response, Brandy denied there being any drama, rearranging the captions and then say, I swear I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny. Can't take this one down. I love this picture. And whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. Brandy also continued unapologetically with, I've met her several times like the several seats that should be taken. She does know me. And if things couldn't get any shadier, Mariah made sure to clear things up in Brandy's comments with a simple, I sure do. At number 6 we have JLo's first husband, Ohani Noah. Despite their marriage being short lived and ending as of 1998, it seems Ohani still can't stand Miss Jenny from the block. Their 9 month marriage apparently wasn't all that great, as Ohani had been working hard to slander his ex wife's name on a number of occasions. Back in 2006, Ohani published a tell all titled The Unknown Truth, a passionate portrait of a serial thriller. JLo halted this project with a lawsuit and claimed that Ohani was breaking their confidentiality agreement. Jennifer won $545,000 in damage and Ohani was given a court date which forbid him from criticizing, denigrating, casting in a negative light, or otherwise disparaging Jennifer. In the next three years, Ohani threw himself back into news outlets when he made threats to release a sexually suggestive video of Jennifer that was filmed during their honeymoon and resulted in another $10 million lawsuit. In 2016, his appearance on Million Dollar Matchmaker saw Ohani claiming he loaded the blame on Jennifer for their split and how he was looking forward to spending a lifetime with her before she chose her career over him. At number 5 we have former NBC World of Dance TV host and mentor Jenna Dewan, who sat on the panel with then executive producer Jennifer. Although the two dancers and celebrities seemed fine during the 2017 reality dance competition tapings, their animosity behind the scenes apparently ran deep. An unnamed outlet source once stated on Jenna's behalf that Jenna quote, can't stand Jen's over the top theatrical fakery. Adding that Jen never fails to ham it up when the cameras are rolling and she hijacks the show. It seems she'd prefer if Jenna just stayed in the background. Every situation, even off camera, is micromanaged by JLo, and Jenna feels very excluded. This alleged feud seemed to be squashed fairly quickly though when Gossip Cop reached out to a show producer and one of Jenna's reps and was informed that their reported beef was misleading. However, given Jennifer's past, can we really be sure of this? At number 4 we have actress Rosie Perez. She and Jennifer apparently had lifelong ties with one another that seemed great on the outside. But both Puerto Rican dancers raised in New York have zero love for each other according to Rosie's 2014 handbook for an unpredictable life memoir. In it, Rosie discusses working on In Living Color with Jennifer in a wickedly horrible light. Quote, All the girls were coming into my office complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me all to her advantage. Despite Jennifer dipping from ILC after two seasons, Rosie stuck with her words of Jennifer supposedly keeping the flame of their feud burning for years after they parted. The words on the pages of Rosie's book portrayed Jennifer to be a two-faced person who would crap on Rosie one minute but then act super sweet like nothing happened between them the next. At number Number 3 we have artist Rihanna who seemed to be unimpressed by Jennifer after the star posted herself chilling with Rihanna's on again off again reported love interest Drake backstage at her 2016 Winter Vegas show. Naturally Jennifer's snap captioned look who rolled up at my show tonight to say hi, hashtag love him, sparked massive dating rumors. And it probably didn't help that Jennifer uploaded a follow up pic of her and Drake bear hugging and looking overly comfortable snuggling up. While many were unconvinced about the headlines, Rihanna was seemingly not here for any of it, which is why she she reportedly went on to dub Jennifer as a desperate traitor. According to an unnamed insider who spoke to Touch, Rihanna had felt like she experienced the ultimate betrayal by Jennifer, since they once had a tight knit bond where Rihanna could seek solace in Jennifer for her relationship. Rihanna did not publicly address their rumored issues, however, she did seem to throw some shade when she suddenly hit the unfollow button on JLo's Insta. At number 2 we have Nikki and Jennifer's heated back and forth jabs that started with an exchange during a 2012 American Idol episode, where Nikki performed and Jennifer was a judge. When the female rapper completed her set, she boldly asked, I was hoping maybe I could come
come back and be a guest judge. JLo, can you scoot over a bit? To which Jennifer immediately quips, I don't know if there's enough room for the both of us. Nikki seemed to hold on to that comment when she attempted to smooth things over back with The Hollywood Reporter, saying, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. We were just joking around. However, in 2015, things were still just as messy. When Jennifer opened the American Music Awards, performing a medley of songs, which included Nikki's hit Anaconda, Nikki seemed to be unimpressed by her performance, as the camera gave away her emotionless expression, which told us everything we needed to know, as one fan hinted. Nikki came to Jennifer's defense at that point, though, when she fired back with a tweet to a fan explaining, I'm looking at my own face on the screen when I'm looking to the right. I turn back and look at her. At number one, we have the iconic I don't know her rivalry that has been carried out for years now. This beef has been ongoing since the early 2000s, with both stars being repeatedly questioned on whether or not they actually like each other. It seems they can't really decide though. Host Danny Cohen brought up their beef on his show in 2014, where Jennifer nonchalantly played the situation off with, I don't have a feud against her at all. I've read things she said about me that were not the greatest, but we don't know each other. I would love to meet her and I would love to be friends with her. However, she told Wendy Williams the exact opposite in 2016 for her show, explaining, she's forgetful I guess, we've met many times. Andy went straight to the source to speak with Mariah that same year and in response, Mariah reiterated, I don't know her, what am I supposed to say? Jennifer of course took this as major shade and when people were flaming Mariah for her quote, disastrous New Year's Eve performance that winter, Jennifer threw some shade of her own by liking a post referring to Mariah's performance as a train wreck. It seems Mariah got the final laugh though because she made it rain shade in her 2020 memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, where she revealed her feud with Jennifer on top of slamming Jennifer's ex-husband and former CEO of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola, for allegedly attempting to ruin her career with Jennifer's help. Mariah claimed Tommy tried to sabotage the Glitter soundtrack, Firecracker, and pushed that the movie's lead single, Lover, did not go unnoticed by Sony executives. Mariah also added that Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label. But rather than naming Jennifer in the allegation in her sampling of Firecracker on I'm Real that same year, Mariah just concluded with her infamous comment, finishing her statement with, after all that ish, Loverboy ended up being the best-selling single of 2001 in the United States. Thank <laughs> you.